Good afternoon, YouTube. This is our next assembly project. This is going to be an unboxing assembly only of the Jason Roamer. This is the high step version. I've already done a video on the step through version showing how to assemble it from unboxing to complete ready to ride condition. And in this case, it's the high step. It's the one that is kind of considered the guy's bike. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a day. So this is what you're gonna get from FedEx delivered and be aware that the package is roughly 60 pounds, 65 pounds, a uh, little bit bulky. So make sure that you have some way uh, for FedEx to deliver it to you in a place that you can easily open it and disassemble it. My FedEx guy usually delivers it back here near the garage. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Once you have the top opened, the first thing you want to do is remove this package right here and go through the contents. So let's go do that and show you what comes in here. So carefully open this up. You can see I'm using a knife here, but I'm barely scoring it. And inside you're going to find some of the components that are going to be needed or the tools that are needed uh, to install it or put it together. Uh, so in this case, we have uh, two open end wrenches. The sizes on these are metric 8, 10, 13, and 15. You have a slew of Allen wrenches, which you'll use those quite a bit to tighten a lot of the stuff. Uh, there is a, a steering plug for a finished look. Show that to you a little bit later. And then we have wire ties to keep the wire management looking a little bit neater. Also inside, you're gonna find a, a pedal set and there's gonna be a left and a right. They're marked by these decals and you gotta be careful uh, the right side turns in the direction that's on the label, the sticker here, and the left side, uh, the opposite. So uh, lefty don't always mean loosey. You're gonna find that out when you're installing these. Just make sure you install them the correctly. You're gonna find what they call a skewer. Uh, some of the components to be concerned with here um, and the order in which they go on is like this. In case you take it apart and something happened, you drop something. You have two cone springs that point uh, the small side inward and then you have these two washers that have tabs built into them you have to make sure those are indexed correctly whenever you're installing it and uh, this is the skewer to mount the front tire and wheel assembly on the forks uh, the nice thing about this is you will uh, basically take this side off put it through the wheel and tire um, I'll show you how that's done and then you can assemble everything relatively easy. You should be able to do this on your own. Although having two hands do come in handy, which I'll talk about here in the packaging. Finally, we have the charger and this is a 54.6 volt, two amp charger. I want to point out that whenever you're charging the bike, please be aware that there's a uh, plug that goes into the battery. Uh, that goes into the battery first. And then uh, once this cord is attached to the brick, um, it plugs into the wall. Don't do it reverse. Do not plug this brick into the wall and then plug this into the battery because there could be a, a, a jump in voltage that'll cause a fuse to pop. Now coming back to the packaging, what I like to do is start removing some of the, the foam and the uh, bubble wrap and Recycle this, make sure that you recycle your foam. Just don't throw it in. You know, we don't need any more in the landfill than what we already have. Now that that packaging is gone, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down the sides of the box, open it up carefully. Do not cut into the bike or any components of the bike. So be really cautious when you're doing this. What I'm going to do is create myself a work area by allowing this box to be unfolded. The bike will stand on its own, but you gotta be careful because it doesn't take very much to knock it over. With the box moved out of the way, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to be able to cut all the wire ties that are holding all the components together and get those organized so you know how this goes together by following this video. So I'm going to do just that. So carefully look for the components and when you're cutting, make sure that you don't cut something critical uh, like a brake cable or a shifter cable. Uh, you're just wanting to cut the wire ties that's used or zip strips as a lot of people call them to 
hold all the packaging on there. What we want to do is get all the packaging free so we can start working on it. But there are more components in here. You can see here's the seat and the seat post and then also the rack that they include. So we'll go ahead and get those taken off and show you what all the components look like. So this is what you're going to be left with with uh, most of the packaging off. You can see I've used the uh, styrofoam uh, that's on the back tire to maintain the, <laughs> the uprightness of the bike. And then the handlebars, I did leave the packaging on the display as I don't want the display to be damaged in any manner. Um, but let's look at all the components now that they're out of the package. So this piece here is unimportant. There's a few of them on the box. This is just for shipping reasons, as is this piece here and this piece that's on the bike currently. Let me go ahead and try to pull that off. There we go. As these just protect the spokes and the axle of the wheel and it protects the wheels axle from damaging the box. Here's everything that comes with the bike. So you have your tire wheel assembly with your disc brake. Make sure that you pay attention to the disc brake whenever you're assembling using this. And this is the front wheel and tire. You have your front fender. You also have your kickstand, which is gonna be the first thing that we mount. I'll tell you why here in a second. Of course, you have your seat and your seat post and then the luggage rack. They include a luggage rack with this. And then all those components I showed earlier that come in the box uh, to help you do this assembly. So first thing I'm gonna do is try to find the wrench. I think it's this middle one. Yeah, that fits the kickstand and we're going to install the kickstand first. The reason that we're going to put the kickstand on first is because once we put the front wheel and tire assembly on, in addition with the fender and the headlight, those all go on at the same time. I'll show you that in a second. We wanna make sure that the bike has a way to stand up at that point. And the only way you can do that is with the kickstand. So first thing I'm going to do is collapse the kickstand, make it look more like this. And then we're going to remove the pre-assembled bolts and washers. You can see there's a gap here. We're going to put that on either side of the bike frame, and then we're just going to reinstall them and then tighten them. So now the kickstand's ready to be used. All we got to do now is put the handlebars on, and there's a lot that I need to talk about there. So what we're wanting to do is make sure that these forks are straight with the bike because once we put the handlebars on we need to make sure everything's straight and we're not going to over tighten anything we're not going to actually tighten everything to any extent either because there may be some movement that needs to be done on your final adjustments before everything gets torqued but the first thing we need to do is remove this long and it's very long bolt that goes down into the fork and what this is that you're looking at is um, the, the shipping configuration to keep the forks seated in this head tube. Uh, once this is loose, the forks could potentially loosen and fall down. So make sure that you keep pressure on the forks or at least when you go to tighten everything back up with the handlebars on, that it is seated correctly if it does come loose. Because you don't want a loose steering system by no means. Again, you can see how long this bolt is. You're gonna maintain this bolt. You're gonna use this bolt to put the handlebars on. You can discard this washer, which is not used in this configuration. You can discard this piece. They call it an aluminum mold. Uh, and it's for shipping reasons because the handlebars are gonna take its place in doing what these two pieces did with the bolt. When you put the handlebars on, you want to make sure that you run the wiring up on the left-hand side of the bike it seems to have the most room. Some bikes require on the right side, some on the left. This is on the left side. And then you're gonna put this collar down over top of it. What you're gonna do is put this bolt now into the steering. And with that same Allen wrench, you're gonna snug this down. And I say snug, you're not gonna overly tighten it. You're just gonna get it to where the handlebars are connected firmly to the fork. There's two more bolts you gotta be concerned with that take a smaller Allen wrench, and that's these two bolts here. These are the cinch bolts. This is what's going to clamp onto that fork tube that's coming up through the head tube of the bike. But you're not gonna do any of that until everything is in perfect alignment. You're also not going to over tighten the handlebars, which you can see are very loose at this point. That's because those adjustments need to be made once you have a seat on the bike, 
the front and rear tire and you're sitting on the bike and adjusting it to your ride preference. You gotta make sure you get all these angles right. And when you do tighten these Allen bolts, these Allen heads, you have to make sure that the clamping force is equal all the way around. So there should be an equal gap between this outer clamp piece and the inner gooseneck that it's clamping onto the handlebar equally. You can't over tighten one bolt more than the other because you're gonna have a problem with the handlebars moving and potentially stripping out those bolts. Now we're gonna prepare for the front wheel tire and fender assembly to go on here, but we need to remove this packaging bolt that's used to keep the forks steady during shipment. So we're gonna loosen this inside one. This is a 15 millimeter. Again, they include that wrench in the kit. Go ahead and loosen that. And loosen this one a little bit further. And then we'll loosen these outer ones. And again, this is just for shipping reasons only. There's no other purpose for this bolt. So once this is off, you can discard it. Now we're ready to put on the tire, wheel assembly, fender, and the headlight, which the fender and the headlight get mounted at the exact same time using the same bolt. I wanna show you these bolts back here that are kind of hidden, and there's one on each side. That's gonna be for the bracket that holds the fender onto the forks. You're gonna slide this fender from the back side underneath the fork crossbow, and then this piece here, this bracket for the fender, is gonna be mounted using these bolts. Do not tighten them. Just get them started until you get this front bolt secured with the light. So now we have the headlight ready to go. We have the bolt removed with the washer. You're going to put the fender in place, but it's going to be the bolt going through the light bracket into the fender mount bracket and then you'll snug that up but not tighten it fully the reason is is because you're going to want to adjust this fender according to the tire now i know most times you need to push the fender all the way up um, and that's kind of like a general rule but aesthetically wise, you may want to do something a little bit different. So just be aware, you may have to re-tighten all this after you've adjusted. And of course you want your headlight, everything to be as parallel, even as possible with each other uh, so that it looks good and that it don't move around too much. Once that's there in place and you have everything adjusted, you can tighten those three bolts. All right, so now we're gonna prepare for the front wheel assembly to go on. Again, we're gonna turn our attention to this skewer. We're going to remove these three components, this cone spring, this washer, and the nut. Once those three pieces are removed, you're gonna pay close attention to the brake disc side. You're gonna put that skewer in. This is the open position, and this is the closed position. So whenever you are assembling this, you want it to be in the open position until it's time to tighten everything down. Once this is through, you need to compress it just slightly. And at that point, you want to put the, again, the cone spring with the small side in, your washer with the tab in, and then the nut. And you want to go ahead and just give it a few little turns, just about that. You don't want it to be any more tight than that because you need to get it onto the forks. All right, this is the time that you call your wife and say, hey, I need your help out here. <laughs> um, or if you think you could do it yourself, you can do it yourself. What I'm doing is positioning myself to lift this up in the air. And when I do, I'm going to try to place the disc brake in the slot for the disc brake caliper. At the same time, I'm going to be lining up the skewer with the bottom of the forks. So let me show you what it should look like. Now at this point, it kind of looks like that it's 
in place, but it's not. Remember, these tabs have to be indexed correctly. So we're gonna get that one there. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. So I've indexed that washer, and now I've indexed the other washer. And at this point, I'm going to tighten the wheel and tire assembly by just turning the nut on the uh, right hand side of the bike but first i'm going to stand up here i'm going to put the kickstand down to help me out that's why we put the kickstand on you got to make sure that the uh, the washers are going in you know these indentations are going in the holes that are provided in the forks but what i'm doing is tightening down this nut on the far side away from the camera and then I'm testing how tight it is with this here. And you can see that's pretty substantial. You should be able to put an indentation on your hand when you push it closed, but that's it, it's mounted. Now we wanna check that everything is straight, that the fender is straight to the tire. Looks pretty good, could use a little bit of adjustment. Don't be afraid to bend the bracket just slightly there if needed to be. But before we check the handlebar position and tighten all those bolts that I told you to leave loose earlier, I want to put on the rear rack and the seat post. Putting the rear rack on is really easy. You just have these two screws here, or when they get so small, I start calling them screws. You're gonna remove these two here, and then these two down here, or this one here and the corresponding one on the other side, just above the fender mount bolts. You're gonna put the rack on, and you're gonna start all of those loosely. Make sure all of them get started. And then once they're all started, you can tighten them and torque them to what they need to be. Now the sizes are different. You have a little bit smaller up top compared to the bottom that's a little bit bigger. Now the rack is on, we're gonna put the tail light on. And since this bike has turn signals, you have to make sure that you put uh, the lead in wire here at the bottom uh, that way, your left means left, your right means right. We're going to run the wiring up to where it's out of the way. Uh, you may want to run it behind and through the rack. And remember, they gave us those wire ties uh, to make this look a little bit neater once it's done. So all that holds this on is a couple of nuts. So you have your wrench, which is an eight millimeter that they provided in the kit. Once those nuts are off, just put it through the bracket and reinstall. Do not over tighten this. You do not want this to be over tightened. All right, again, they have those wire ties in there. What you're gonna to wanna to do is try to just put this out of the way and tighten it up behind one of these bars for the rack to make it look a little neater. All right, so now we're gonna turn our attention towards the pedals and remember, they're left and right. There's marked. They do go in a specific way. The right one is going to turn in a traditional manner to tighten. You're just going to turn it forward or righty tighty as they say. And then it's going to be the 15 millimeter wrench that we use for the front fork shipping bolt to tighten it. And you can see that when I'm tightening this, this kind of simulates a pedaling motion in the direction you'd go. That's why when we move to the other side and we tighten this one, we wanna simulate that same pedal motion, which is left. So you're gonna turn this to the left to tighten it. Again, snug that up. So we're almost finished here and there's just a few more things to do and that's put the seat on the seat post. This is like the setup for the front fork and that's this same type of quick release we're going to use this nut to do the majority of the adjustment. We're going to fold this up in a way to keep uh, this seat post in its position and held in its position. Make sure you do not have this thing extended past this line. There's also adjustments that can be made here by loosening these nuts and you can pivot the seat uh, so that it may not be pointing up so high. Um, in this case, it looks like it's in pretty good shape right from the factory. But as far as the tightness, I can tell, this definitely needs to be more firm. So we're gonna loosen it to its open position and we're going to turn this nut quite a bit. And then once we get it to the point where we want it, we go ahead and fold this over. And now the seat is held in place. So you remember I left this on so we didn't scuff or hurt the display. 
Um, so we can take this off now. And the mount for the display is relatively loose. And that's for your own personal positioning. You'll tighten that, I'll show you here in a second. But the first thing we wanna do is get everything straight. So when the, the wheel and the tire straight with the frame, we need to make sure the handlebars are straight also. Uh, so that what you're doing with the handlebars matches what the tire is doing. So the first thing we're gonna do is stand the bike upright. And we again, we wanna position the handlebars to be perfectly lined up with the tire. The first thing you wanna do is tighten this bolt here. And that's to pull the fork. No, don't over tighten, don't go crazy. You don't wanna strip anything out or break anything. But you wanna make sure that it's tight and straightened out. Looks pretty good there. Now you can tighten the, the cinch bolts or the clamp bolts. Again, do not over tighten, but make sure they're, they're really snug. Okay, now that that's tight, the next thing you need to do is adjust the handlebars. Remember, we didn't tighten the handlebars um, with those clamps. We just kind of loosely put it in there and you want to get the correct position when you're sitting on the seat that's comfortable for you to be able to pull the brakes and hit the throttle and do your shifter. Um, the display moves by itself, so don't really worry about that. We'll tighten that separately. But you want to be able to get to all the uh, components relatively easy. Your sh shifter, your horn, your turn signal, your lights, all those things uh, need to be done relatively easy as you're riding down the road uh, so that you don't have to, uh, you know, look down and figure it out. You should just be able to put your hands on it. So I'm thinking right about here is right seems to be right so now again we're going to tighten uh, the bolts here and we're going to do it equally all the way around uh, so that there's an equal gap all the way around so once you have the handlebars in position and tightened now it's time to position your display then use the allen wrench uh, to tighten the display to hold it to where it's comfortable for you to read again easy to see while you're riding down the road as a finishing touch we go ahead and put this plug in here to make that look a little bit neater and to keep from water building up in there. Now's the time to go through and check all of your brakes. Make sure that they stop. Make sure your tires are inflated. Uh, make sure your shifter works correctly by turning the pedals by hand with the bike off. You know, do not turn it on at that point. You just want to see if the gears work. Go through the shifter, make sure everything works there, and then turn the bike on and get familiar with all the settings that are in the display. Uh, go ahead and charge your battery, um, real simple to do. Uh, there's a port on there, you plug it in. Once the light on the charger turns green, you'll know that you're full charge. Uh, pull the plastic off all the lights and uh, check those. Make sure your turn signals work, your horn, which we already did that pretty much by accident, and you're ready to go. This bike is ready to be ridden. I appreciate you guys watching, and as always, we hope to see you out there. Bye.